Keystone Clash, let's check on those uh, Amazon swords. Where the heck did they go? Gosh, dang it. All right, which one of you cichlids did it? <laughs> oh man, ah, so typical, you gotta love cichlids. All right, this isn't the fish basement, but this is the start of the bog filter makeover. Lots of baby plants getting ready to go into their new bog filter homes. Uh, do not look at that, you're not supposed to see that. Uh, or that. <laughs> Those big things coming up in the future. And it's always hard to go over to the Discus Aquarium without first stopping by and checking on the Mbuna, the Malawi African Cichlid River Aquarium. See if I can interest these guys in a little bit of uh, extreme crow flake. Seems like they're going for it. And as you can see, they've got their Pothos growing out of the top now, and uh, yeah, they're getting a bog filter makeover really soon. All right, let's get over the discus tank. So just real quick before I jump into the video, I need to ask, somebody posted a comment on a recent video about adding kind of like a like a dock, like a, like a like an Amazonian boat dock kind of thing in the 3,000 gallon, and I replied to them, that sounds awesome, but I didn't think I could pull it off. Well, it stuck in my head, <laughs> I kept thinking about it and thinking about it and looking at pictures online of like a, you know, Amazonian tribal, you know, uh, uh, dock area for their canoes and everything, and I found some stuff that I think I could pull off and it solves some other problems. It gives me a, a place to put a sediment filter. Uh, I think Ian was the guy who uh, mentioned that, you know, like an overhead sediment filter. So if I build the dock, I can actually use the top of it, it combined with my bracing for the sediment filter. And I create the overhang in the aquarium because the fish love going under there. So uh, whoever gave me that, that uh, comment, please comment on this because I've been looking for it. I'm not lazy. I was looking. I just can't find it. And it's driving me nuts. I want to give you credit because you got it stuck in my head. I couldn't get out of my head. And now I'm going to build it. So the 3,000 gallon, oh my God, I'm building up stuff for that thing. It, that re overhaul in the 3,000 gallon is going to be pretty insane. All right, let's get into the discus aquarium. Well, if you can believe it, it's already been three months since we reset the 220 gallon during the double DIY rebuilds uh, and uh, made it the Discus Flooded Forest Aquarium. Well, so over those three months, uh, it has been going mostly well, but there have been a few issues with the aquarium that I want to address now and a few upgrades I want to do to make the system run better and really just be a more enjoyable tank than it is right now. So we're going to jump into those fixes and upgrades right now. Okay, where do we start? So as you can see, you got a little bit of a temporary light situation going on. I just have a couple lights up above the aquarium uh, because I'm in the middle of uh, making some upgrades. So let me start by saying uh, what's been going well and what has been going well. So what has been going well is the fish. They're all healthy, they're all growing, uh, they're all happy. Uh, I tried a few experiments with the temperature from the discus and I saw what I felt was better, healthier behavior at uh, 82 degrees than what I was experiencing at that 77, 78. So um, I thought that might be the case. I mean, obviously we all know discus in general prefer the warmer temperatures, but I'm also someone that feels that they don't need to be at 84, 86 all the time. So I, you know, tried some experiments. Uh, took them, I brought them down to 77, 78. And uh, while they seem to do well, I, I said, okay, I need another data point so let me bring the temperature up to 82 and uh, I really liked uh, their behavior at that temperature I tried higher temperatures and I didn't notice much of a difference so I've gone ahead and just stayed on 82 and uh, everything's been going well uh, now one of the things that has been going well is you can see there's still the, the hair algae that was there before you know it's not crazy but it's it's grown it's more clumps you know and it hasn't certainly just gone away uh, and part of that problem is the lights being right on top of the aquarium. Now, normally I have the covers on and then the lights, but since I'm working on it, I've taken it off, but that's part of the problem is with the lights sitting right on the covers, it's actually difficult to work on this aquarium. I'm always having to slide things in and out. It's kind of a pain. So uh, I've, I've been wanting to change that as well as, you know, I added uh, bog filter sections to all of my sumps and the problem here is with this sump, 
the water flow comes into the area that I have available for the bog filter and these plants don't like having that much water pushing in on them. So I decided to go ahead and fix all of these problems uh, with a new solution for this aquarium. All right, so let me take you away from the tank for a minute and let me show you what I'm building and what we're gonna be changing on the 220. All right, here you go. This is the solution for all the 220's problems. <laughs> this right now, it's uh, just drying. These, these guys on top, they're just sitting there. That's not actually the final thing. None of this is final. It's just being painted right now. But yes, you're looking at a canopy. Um, so it's a custom-made canopy that is boxed out for around my uh, overflow box in the back. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna allow me to put on the top of it uh, clear twin wall polycarbonate so I can have the lights suspended up above the aquarium. And it's gonna give me room inside the aquarium. You see here we have a foot of room for plants to grow out of the top of the aquarium. And the reason that's important is because I'm gonna be moving the bog from the current location to inside the aquarium. Uh, let me take you back over. So the plan is, is I'm taking all of the floating plants as well as some of the other ones I have in other tanks and I'm going to be remove them from, removing them from this compartment in the, in the sump and I'm going to be placing them in the tank. Because Now once we have the canopy on top, we're going to have room for those plants to grow up and that's going to give us um, a better location for those plants to live because there's minimal water flow, really just in the one corner. I turned off the, uh, the gyre pump over here and it's been running that way for quite a while and it's been doing well. So we're gonna have the whole top covered with these floating plants, which is gonna hopefully do a couple good things. So it's gonna starve out nutrients because they're gonna flourish because they're gonna be getting a lot of light from when they have the entire complement of lights on the top right above them. It's also gonna, also since that light doesn't have to go through water, it's the same effect as the new stuff for the 3000 gallon. You get a lot more light to those plants on the surface than having to penetrate all the water. And then the other benefit is it's gonna start blocking some light uh, from this hair algae and hopefully you know kill it off uh, that's the the goal and while still providing enough light for the uh, the door sedge and the grass plants which honestly don't require a whole lot and uh, they're all doing great so no problems there so that's gonna open up a spot in the filter where I'm gonna replace that with emergent growth bog plants so rather than floaters uh, I'm planning to put in a peace lily so we're gonna have peace lilies or similar bog plants growing up out of the water down here. And we're gonna have floaters up in the top, which is gonna give us uh, diffusing the light coming down. It's gonna take advantage of the light that's just going through the air inside the canopy. Oh, and the other thing the canopy is gonna do is it's gonna have sliding fronts on it. So I can easily slide the front pieces to get in to do things. Because right now what's happening is I'm, because I have to take off and move things around to get in the tank to do anything, it's causing me to not take care of it as much as I would if it was easier. A lot of times I'll procrastinate and I'll be like, oh, I'll just, uh, I'll do that later on or whatever. So it's just been kind of a pain. So we're gonna fix all of these things right now. And uh, then we'll come back in, take a look at the tank with the canopy, with the lights. And uh, these discus look hungry. I think it's time for a feeding. All right, let me get this canopy finished and then we'll take a look. So I figured I'd show you that I did bring the swords back down and they have been replanted. Uh, so this is gonna be 2.0. Uh, we took the one that was over here, we moved it further over here, giving these guys their big space. Uh, I put this one back where it was before and then the, the other one we've got all the way to the right and surrounded by a lot of rocks. So uh, we'll see, we all know with cichlids, uh, it's a, a lot of trial and error, but uh, here we go with uh, saving the swords 2.0, hopefully, uh, they'll thrive in their new locations, but we'll keep an eye on it either way. Well, that's been another 24 hours. Let's check and see how the swords are doing. Mother, mm, cichlids. Yeah, all of them, all three of them over here. All right, I am getting tired of replanting these. You guys have won. I'm gonna have to come up with another strategy. I'm thinking, hmm, I don't know, maybe have to move, you know, move this rock and maybe pot, you know, like uh, set fabric pots or something like that, put the plants in and pour my rocks around and like really build it up, make the plants part of an island or something like that. Cause just rooted in the sand over here. Now these two, they don't bother, but these three over here, 
they, you know, they're not having it. So I have to figure something out. Obviously they want that space. So I need to do something where I don't take any more space than I've already got there. So maybe the big rocks got to come out and be replaced by the planter and smaller rocks or something. Uh, we'll see. Okay, here's the first look at the 220 gallon flooded forest discus aquarium upgraded. And when I mean upgraded, I mean upgraded with a canopy with the big lights, with the lights up on top. So what's that's doing for us is that's, uh, first of all, it's actually helping to uh, disperse the light more evenly across the aquarium, which I am definitely liking. But the reason I did it was actually so that we could do these floating plants up at top, up on the top of the aquarium, water hyacinth and water lettuce, uh, to both create <clears throat> a visual effect like we see, but also to filter that light. Uh, Cause we, been running this tank now for three months and we still have some of that hair algae. It hasn't gone crazy and taken over the tank, but it hasn't gone away either. So uh, it's time to do something about it. You know how I like to do things about it is I like to correct the, the root of the problem. So we are going to lessen some of that light. We have plenty of light for the uh, dwarf sag and the val and everything we have in there. And uh, hopefully by having the lights up at the top, going through the air to those floating plants, uh, that'll give them the amount of light they need is their highlight plants. You know what, let me take these covers off the front and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so there's a better look at what we're talking about. So this is the, the canopy that I built uh, to basically be able to move those lights up off the top of the surface, but also contain the humidity and everything in there. So it's mostly blocked off. Uh, you can see I boxed around the, the uh, overflow over there and the water return over there. But basically, uh, the point of it is to create this space in here so that we can add these floating plants. So we brought these over uh, from the other filters, from the other aquariums, because uh, we're replacing those with uh, some plants you might have seen at the beginning of the video, uh, more bog style plants. Um, but at any rate, all of these floating plants, they need a lot of light. And as you can see, you know, they weren't getting it in those other uh, other uh, sumps, you know, because there was just a single 50 watt light on there. So you see a lot of browning, but um, what you can't see is that the leaves have peaked up, perked up on top uh, since they've been in here, which has only been a week. Uh, so I believe they are now getting the right amount of light because there's quite a bit of light on here and the light is only traveling through the air. It's not having to go through the water to get to these plants, but it is having to go through those plants and through the water to get to this hair algae. So hopefully, uh, we are going to starve this hair algae out because we've done a pretty good job of limiting the nutrients. That's why it hasn't grown. It's just sort of stayed where it's at. I mean, it's actually a little less than it was before. I mean, it's certainly a lot less than it's been the worst part, but that's what I was focusing on uh, displacing the nutrients. But it's uh, since then, it's kind of stayed the same for a while I'll, or maybe a little bit better, but definitely not 100% gone. And, and the tank doesn't have the, you know, the the look I want with that hair algae. So we're going to start diminishing that light. We're keeping control of those nutrients. And of course the tank is just stabilizing and becoming more mature because the reality of it is, is, uh, you know, three months is not a long time for one of these tanks to get established. Now this tank was already set up, but we, you know, I doubled up on the sand base and went right over the old stuff. So we know we had a lot of die off. We had a lot of nutrients. Uh, we rescaped it. It was dry for a while. So, you know, even though the tank was running, so there is some carryover, uh, mostly there's not because we did so much change over such a period of time that yeah, it died off. So we had to, you know, to restart it. Now it wasn't too bad to restart it because, you know, we used filter media and everything moved over from other aquariums. So that's one benefit of having multiple aquariums is it's easy to get something started off, but you just can't, uh, you know, you can't change time. You gotta have patience. You gotta let the time go by. You gotta do the right things and then let nature take its course. And uh, then you get a very, very resilient aquarium that is very stable. And so we're about halfway there. Cause my experience with this size aquarium uh, with fresh waters usually takes me about six months before I feel like the tank is rock solid. Um, one other thing, well, let me first drop down to the filtration again. So you can see in the apart department here, uh, compartment, sorry. <laughs> um, this is the bog filter for this aquarium. So we have a pothos in there now, but there are peace lilies and other bog plants here as well. And pretty soon they're gonna be moved in here. And you can also see that I went ahead and kicked the, the temperature up in this aquarium to 82. Uh, and 
since I went to 82, it's been perfect with the fish. Um, you know, trying to run them at 78, you know, it was doable, but uh, I have to say that I don't really feel like the discus were, like they were tolerating it more than thriving in it, I would say. So uh, at any rate, at 82, they're doing great. I would say they're thriving. I did run it for a while at 84, at 85. I didn't see any difference from 82. So uh, I'm gonna just go with 82. Um, <laughs> you know, so you know I heat the basement. So this aquarium is my only aquarium with a heater, a supplemental heater. So the basement stays at you know 78, 79, and then the heater takes this one up to 82. Uh, so it's not too bad. Uh, the other thing that happened was, this is, this is kind of crazy. So you might notice there's all the discus. Everyone's great. Everyone's, you know, all the same guys. The Cory cats, everybody's there. The Serpe tetras, all the same fish. The rams, everything's good. But you might notice, oh, where's the uh, rummy nose and the neon tetra? I only see a few of them. Well, the craziest thing, I had a buddy of mine who had a, a South American, you know, community tank. It was actually it had a lot of different stuff in it, but it had a lot of rummy nose and it had a lot of neons. And he was breaking it down because he wanted to switch it over to African cichlids. So he found homes for his other fish or he was putting them into his other aquariums. And he said to me, hey, do you want those neons and those rummy nose for your uh, flooded forest tank? And I was like, oh yeah, that would be great. And he's had these fish for a year. You know, they're all healthy and everything like that. So I bring them over here. I introduce them to this tank. Cause I'm thinking, you know, am I gonna quarantine a fish that's been living in this guy's healthy aquarium for a year and none of his fish are sick, everything is great. So I bring them over, you know, and uh, acclimate them and over the course of the next few weeks, it just, it just like, I just keep seeing rummy nose and, and neon tetras just disappearing. Every other fish in the aquarium is fine. Nobody ever got sick. I never saw any signs of sickness on the neon tetras and rummy nose, but they would just, they were just sort of dying off. I don't know what the heck happened <laughs> between the two groups, but uh, basically, yeah, a good chunk of them died off. So I'm having to bring in more and, and, and quarantine them and everything. So. I need to build those schools back up. Uh, to me, it, it really affects the aquarium. It really kind of shows me how important those schools of smaller fish were going in and out amongst all the discus and you know the fish like the serpe. So, but it was the it was the damnedest thing because like I said, all the other fish are fine and no fish ever showed signs of sickness. I just would just each day for you know the, after the two weeks, three weeks after I brought those fish over, they would just start disappearing, you know, and or you know dying, I guess and. Um, so I was pulling them out for a couple weeks, just, you know, one here, one there, you know, each day be one and then another one, you know, I don't know. It was weirdest that I really haven't had anything like that happen. I don't normally bring in fish that way. It's, it's unusual. Um, so I don't know what the heck could have happened. Uh, none of his fish, uh, that he kept, uh, were sick either. So who the heck knows? But, uh, I think these discus are looking a little hungry. Let's see if they, uh, want something to eat. Let's reach over and give them some of this cobalt food. So I feed them a lot of different foods. Uh, they really like the ocean nutrition. They like the Sara food. But for some reason, this cobalt discus food, <laughs> all the fish cook kind of nuts for this stuff. I mean, it really, really stinks. You know, like to a human, the smell is really stinky. And But to a fish, man, oh my gosh, they love it. I have to look and see. I mean, it, it is, uh, it's high protein, 45%. I was just kind of see what the, uh, the first ingredient is that gives it, uh, yeah, oh, salmon. So the first ingredient is salmon, that's interesting. I don't know if, uh, this is what I'm talking about right here. I don't know if I've seen that necessarily. I see like fish meal and things like that, but for that to say salmon first and then fish meal second, so uh, interesting. Uh, but proofs of the pudding as far as the fish go, they love it. <laughs> and I don't mean just the fish in this tank. I mean any tank that eats flake in my, in my fish room. They all, they all think it's great. So uh, at any rate, uh, it's got the protein for these, for the discus, 45%. So I like to uh, mix it up and uh, give them the Sarah, you know, discus granules, the ocean nutrition and the cobalt. So uh, that's what goes down uh, in this aquarium here in the, in the discus aquarium. So um, moving forward, uh, the canopy top. So the, the covers I made, as you can see, my assistant here has, these are just temporary, just, you know, thin Luan wood that uh, I just painted just to put up there to block the light so I can enjoy the aquarium while I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. So I'm going to make nice looking tops. You know, there'll be 
similar to like over on the 3000 gallon and then the bottom will be like on the 3000 gallon but there'll be removable panels for the bottom it's easy uh, usually what i do is i put in hooks kind of like you see paintings and they and then it'll just basically hang on the front so i can just pick it up and move it away and get you know access to everything going on down there but for the tops i'm not sure if i want to do that if i want to have to pop off a top every time i want to feed these fish or if i want to hinge them up or hinge them out so uh you know if anyone's got thoughts on that that would definitely you know like to hear it uh you know sometimes you get close to it you don't see the obvious so it's always good to have that that second opinion you know from uh, outside looking in but uh that what needs to be done here and then of course i just need to make sure there is enough light for these floating plants up here so we'll give them some time to recover from the the low light situation i had them in which certainly wasn't going to cut it for them um so this should like i said this is a uh, considerably more par uh, than what they were getting over the other court in the uh in the bog filter so uh i think it should work out here so moving forward with the discus aquarium other than keeping these guys growing and keeping everybody in here healthy is i'm building up the rummy nose and the neon tetra schools and in fact i may switch to cardinals cardinal tetras i've for the longest time i don't know with uh you know, i've kept a lot of tanks for a long time and in my water cardinal tetras are bulletproof they just i never had never had a problem with them they grow huge they grow really they, like a lot of my other fish they last longer than you would typically expect that kind of thing that's the experience i have with cardinals with neons it's kind of hit or miss you know it's not like i can't keep neons and they don't do okay but they just kind of do okay you know and i never know is it the source or anything or or my wall i don't know i don't really think it's the water but uh i don't know what it is they just never do quite as well rubby nose i usually don't have much of a problem with um uh, so really this is only the first time I've ever had uh, one group cause another group to die off or anything like that So I don't know, but uh, yeah, at any rate, I want to build up those small fish in here because I think that's what uh, Really sets this tank apart uh, for the disc especially as they get bigger I love that contrast between the big boys and the, the little schools going in between and when these schools are bigger They're definitely impressive uh, And I personally am liking uh, the roots coming down. Uh, it's like I said, it's only been a week and the, <laughs> the roots have really grow they've added inches and and they've filled out so hopefully it is just a matter of time before all this hair algae the rest of the hair algae is gone uh the roots get even deeper and uh we keep everything growing down here and i think we're really starting to dial in the look on the flooded forest i know for me it's got the right look it's definitely i can see where it's going it's coming along so uh i just got to get those schools replaced and then i think i'll feel a lot better because I love the way it looked before and as much as I love the discus, I need, I need those complimenting fish in the environment to, to really set off the tank. All right, let's check on the sores and see if the fifth time is the charm. Uh, all right, I give up. <laughs> I'm bringing in the pots. We're gonna have to pot the swords. Uh, you cichlids, man. I can't get mad at you because I knew you were gonna do it, but I was really hoping you wouldn't. All right, it's time to pot those swords. All right, so that's the update on the uh, Flooded Forest Discus Aquarium. As you can tell, we have uh, a bunch of bog filters uh, that are getting upgraded here this week. And I am gonna be starting on the step-by-step -step DIY build uh, where I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna break down uh, what it costs to do the double DIY builds. Then we're gonna build an aquarium from scratch. It's gonna be roughly around a 300 to 350 gallon aquarium with around a 80 to 100 gallon sump. And it's, you know, it's, a, it's a setup that I think is, you know, moderate right it's big enough to be worth doing diy but it's small enough that i think it's feasible for most people to have i mean if i do it you know step by step diy on a 3000 gallon it's, it's a little bit ridiculous right so pick something that's a lot more mainstream but it'll also show you a different technique so the i'll talk about it in the video but you i've done stack techniques like the 3000 gallon and the, and the 600 gallon reef slope and i've done the other uh, I call it the gator method because a long time ago on the forums there was a guy named Gator who built this way, which is the, the framing method like Predator Bay with a lot of windows or the framing method like the double DIY builds. But so this one is going to be a little bit different and I'll go over why because like all DIY builds, uh, it's not really so much about just saving money on a big tank. It's also, it's custom, it's DIY. It's going to fit the exact space you need and we're going to, I'm going to show why I'm going to build it this way because I need to build it that way to fit the space I have available and the needs I have for this aquarium. So 
those those are coming up soon as well as you know we're, we're still working on uh, getting the jungle aquarium to be more of a jungle we got that old back wall going you saw some of the wood up there you saw wood for the new double you know the new diy build because once we build it we're gonna stock it so uh, of course that's gonna be cool uh, so we have a lot of things going there and i am of course still working on the annex it, it is not easy wrangling contractors but i'm doing my best and hopefully we'll break ground on that uh pretty soon all right thanks for watching see you guys soon